So what's the deal with the ego? Freud talked about it. Spiritual teachers from the East talk about it. Your girlfriend talks about yours. Is your ego a problem? Maybe. Probably. Your ego was part of the standard operating equipment you got when you first came here to Earth School. You got a brand new body in your choice of colors. You got an intellect so you could think up things. You got emotions so you could tell when trouble was coming. And you got an ego. And they said, there you go, pilgrim. There's your new Earth suit. See what you can do with that. Maybe it was your first go-round here in Earth School, and you sort of fumbled around for a while and didn't get much done. Then you noticed that other people had stuff, and you said, hey, that looks good. I want some stuff, too. And that's when your ego kicked in. And because you wanted stuff, at that point you actually started growing and developing and learning as a human being. At that point your ego was just a little guy, maybe about like this. Like the intellect, the emotions, and the body, the ego has a purpose. It's designed to keep you motivated and moving forward through life and help you stay vertical. It gets you up in the morning and gets you out of bed. It inspires you to reach for the stars or at least for a paycheck. And it helps you keep your hair combed so you look good for other egos. One of the main things the ego does for us is it keeps us from being overwhelmed by our emotions. Say, for example, something traumatic happens. It's possible that we could be overwhelmed by fear. So, at the point at which that fear might devastate us, the ego throws a kind of an emotional circuit breaker, and it stores that fear away within us until such time as we're better able to deal with it. That's a great thing the ego does, and it could save our life. But that stuff it stores away, that's called emotional baggage and the ego has to get a little bigger in order to contain it, maybe about the size of a grapefruit. Well, what happens is, as we go through experiences throughout our lifetime and throughout lifetimes, our ego has to get bigger and bigger in order to wall off all of this fear, anger, and sadness we accumulate. And the ego builds up all sorts of defenses, masks, and armoring just to help us feel safe. Eventually, the ego gets so big that almost all our energy goes to just maintaining it, and our essence gets hidden behind this huge thing. And that's a problem, because at that point, we can't relate to anybody in any kind of a genuine way. It's always our ego putting on a show while our essence is stuck way in the background. And it works that way whether your ego's strategy is to be big and bombastic or shy and self-effacing. It's the same ego either way. It's a pickle. So, what to do? When we've got an accumulation of emotional baggage that the ego is working overtime to contain, the best thing that we can do is begin to do some emotional healing, clearing, and releasing so that the ego doesn't have to hold so much of that stuff in. And the more emotional baggage we release, the less we have. And the smaller that ego can eventually become again. Maybe about the size of a golf ball. I don't have a golf ball. I call this work emotional clearing. And I've developed a number of programs to help you do just that. Look for all of my work at thehealingwaterfall.com.